I don't know who you are. Pete and Hido. I don't know what you want. We'd love to talk about the Solvay process. If you are looking for a ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Bullshit. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. So scared. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I, I don't accept your, your shit. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. Nobody gives a shit. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Nobody, as of yet, has managed to do it. Who'd have believed, really, the water isn't made of hydrogen <laughs> and oxygen? <laughs> Peter and Pete talking tough there. And so they should because they just brought out a new video. And in that video, they claim they've done an experiment which yet again proves that water isn't made of hydrogen and oxygen. And in that experiment, they take 32 little tiny jars and they fill them with a, a warm, salty solution. Um, I wonder if it went down anything like this. My friend is uh, yanking out a sample in one of the rooms. Oh, well, that's a good friend. Good catch. What the? Oh, shit. Oh, God. Fuck, dude, that's somebody's kid. One into the other. <laughs> now, even Willy Wonka couldn't sugarcoat how stupid Peter and Pete are, but some of their followers might just still be able to be saved. So at the end of this video, I'm really going to give an in-depth explanation of the electrolysis and why Peter and Pete are wrong, because some people have asked, and I, and I think they generally want to know, but they just don't understand. So that's going to come up at the end of this video. If you want to watch just that scientific explanation, skip to the end. Uh, for now, a new section. I'm going to call it Chatbox Travels, um, where I, Conspiracy Cats, travel the world from the safety of my own room on my computer, and I meet lots of interesting people around the internet chat boxes. Um, here's episode number one. There is a voice that keeps on calling me down the road. That's where I'll always be. Every stop I make, I'll make a new friend. Can't stay for long, just turn around and I'm gone again. Chat box travels. So, this week's Chatbox Travel Star is a guy called Pete Shea Encore. I first met him in the chat box of Block for Block. Um, do you remember him? He's a guy who said this. All teachers are fucking mongs. And this. All professors are mongs. And this. I want your reactions. I want your reactions to be true. I want people to see it. I want you to feel it. If you feel it, you'll be angry. In fact, he seemed so obsessed with me at the time... I made a video to show you all. Uh, since then, he seems to have gone really quiet and has refused to debate me on what water's made of. We did have that debate agreed, so anyone looking forward to that, um, it's block for block that was bottled out, uh, not me. Anyway, let's have some highlights of uh, Pete Shea Encore. Here he comes. All, all the luminaries that we see are, have one source and one source alone, and that is Aristarchus. It can be best described as the decapitated tree of life as it emanates from the north center. <laughs> What the hell did you just say? The moon is the exact same size as the sun. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? We are dealing with an electromagnetic, watery, mirror-like barrier above, and we have a kaleidoscopic expression of the source energy. What the fuck did you just fucking say? Because the moon is a reflection of the sun. What the fuck did you just say? The sun itself is a reflection of Polaris. Last year, last year, I found the Milky Way and all the constellations, the star constellations on the moon. What the fuck did you just fucking say? Uh, you have the illusion of solidity, but actually the moon is a reflection of solidity. What the fuck did you just fucking say? And the sun and the moon are opposites, right? So why would they name one uh, in, in relation to the other? Well, this is a clue for us. Gemini is also about twins that are telling us that the sun and the moon are one and the same. What the fuck did you just fucking say? Yeah, uh, these once uh, uh, giant magnificent crystalline trees were uh, destroyed, decapitated, if you will. What the fuck did you just say? 
That's episode one of Chatbox Travels. Thirty-three bottles hanging on the wall. So now it's time for us to make ourselves feel bigger and more special by uh, making Peter and Pete look stupid. Um, I'm going to talk you through electrolysis to a, a fairly highish GCSE level. No, there's no need to go any higher. Um, and then once you've got that full understanding, you can really see how dumb what Peter and Pete are saying is. And if you've already got that understanding, just stop watching now uh, and thank you for watching to this point. Those people that want to know about electrolysis and want to know why Peter and Pete are wrong, you keep watching. Peter and Pete, I know they watch my videos, uh, but as a good teacher, I like to differentiate. So for you, I've got a book for you, so you can be reading this, right? It's called um, Nursery Treasury, right, by Miles Kelly. It's an absolute belter, so that will suit you while I do the technical stuff with everyone else. So, get my old teacher's whiteboard as well, rather than... Uh, ugh, videos. So electrolysis, we take a beaker and inside that beaker we place two bits of metal which are, they are our electrodes and they're connected to a power supply. One will be positive which we call the anode, one will be negative which we call the cathode. Now we place into that solution what we call an ionic compound. Now ionic compounds are made when a metal and a non-metal react. So here I've got magnesium chloride. Now, the thing about ionic compounds is when I dissolve them, when I put them in solution, so let's take our magnesium chloride and put it in here now, they dissociate into ions. So my magnesium is in group two of the periodic table and the metal always loses electrons and that leaves it with a positive charge because now it's got less negative charges in the form of electrons than positive charges uh, in the form of protons. So the magnesium, as you can see now, has got a charge of 2+. plus. That's my magnesium ion. Chlorine is in group 7. The non-metal always gains an electron. And again, the number it gains will depend on the, the group in the periodic table. But because it's gained an electron, it's now got a negative charge. It's got more negatives than positives. And quite simply, due to a, uh, something we call electrostatic attraction, the positive metal ion um, will travel to the negative cathode. The... Um, Chlorine here, the negative ion will travel to the positive anode. And what we'll find is the chlorine, and you know, it's complicated what goes on here, but the chlorine will be seen as chlorine gas, and the magnesium won't be seen as a gas. The magnesium will actually coat the cathode. All right, so the metal usually coats that, and it's really easy to do with copper. Copper sulfate would have been a good example as well. You can really see that, that colour change with copper. Now, when Peter and Pete are talking about salt, when they do it, they're talking about sodium chloride. Now, sodium chloride is a little bit different. Sodium is a group one metal. Just watch these video clips to show what happens when group one metals are mixed with water. Mr. Tickle, bring on the rubidium. Here it is. Is that it? Stand back, everybody. This one's going to be bad. Uh, two grams of rubidium will only react when our specially designed vial dissolves in the water, which gives John a few crucial seconds to get into our safety zone. But I believe we can go one better. There is one more alkali metal we can legally use. Yes, Richard, cesium, the emperor of alkali metals. Warning, 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 extreme danger, clear the area. As our cesium sinks in the water, the rapid generation of hydrogen gas should produce quite an explosion. So, after seeing those, you know that group one metals behave in an odd way with water. They react with them very violently. So let's change our ionic compound here to sodium chloride, right? So I have sodium and I have chlorine. And inside my electrolysis beaker, I have my positive sodium. It's in group one, so it'll get a charge of plus one. And chlorine will have a charge of minus one. Now the chlorine does want to make it all the way over to the anode because of that electrostatic forces of attraction. They've got opposite charges. But the sodium, the Na+, although, and this is a good way of thinking about it. It's a lot more complicated what's really happening. But a good way to think about it is the sodium wants to make it over to the negative anode. Again, because of that electrostatic force of attraction. But as you've just seen on the video, 
sodium reacts with water. It's never going to get there. It's never going to make it. But like I say, this is a little bit more complicated than this. But it, if we just use the analogy that it reacts with the water on the way to the cathode. And when it does that, it forms an alkali, which is sodium hydroxide, NaOH. O for the oxygen. Now, that means that at the cathode... You might be thinking, well, what forms at the cathode? Nothing forms at the cathode. Well, actually, as you'll have seen on the video, when our group one metals like sodium are reacted with water, we get a gas given off. And that gas is hydrogen. And it's the hydrogen that is given off at the cathode. And we can test it. It will be lighter than air. It will be colourless. It will be odourless. It will uh, have a squeaky pop when I put a splint in it that will form a mist that will condense into water, etc., etc. Um, the sodium stays in here. Now, the longer I do the electrolysis for, the more the sodium from the sodium chloride reacts to form sodium hydroxide. So when, well, I'll leave that a bit for later, actually. So, but basically, the, the more sodium is going to be in this solution here, the stronger the solution is going to get. And we can see that by putting uh, some universal indicator in, it will become more and more and more and more alkaline. So essentially, that's the electrolysis of sodium chloride. We would expect hydrogen at the cathode. We would expect chlorine at the anode. And we would expect sodium hydroxide. And this is what we get here. And this liquid has all the properties of sodium hydroxide. We know it's sodium hydroxide. So what does this show? Well, this shows us that the sodium reacts with something that must have oxygen in it to give us sodium hydroxide. Otherwise, the formation of sodium hydroxide here will be impossible. We do know that hydrogen is given off at the cathode. So I have hydrogen and I have oxygen that have come from somewhere inside the water. Because all we've put into the water as our electrolyte is sodium chloride. Let's see what Peter and Pete have got to say. When I was doing my electrolysis of uh, sea salt, um, sea salt, um, I obviously collected the gas at both uh, cath uh, electrodes, okay, and open cathode. And um, I collected all of the bottles. I got 35 bottles that were um, from the cathode, from the cathode um, electrode, okay. And I kept all the bottles and I got the first one and I got more or less the last one Number just 32. to compare the difference in, in the bottle. The in solution of it, the solution of, of the solution yeah absolutely now so both both bottles were just basically submerged in the solution and then inverted over the electrode okay mm. and then the hydrogen gas bubbled off displaced the water inside the well, bottle. sodium based gas the sodium based gas displaced the water or the solution inside the bottle and i then just just Pulled, it, pulled the bottle off and let the bottle dry out. Now, we can clearly see that the bottle on the left, which was one of the earliest bottles that I used during the process, is covered in a film of white, um, which is sodium potassium um, salt derivative. Mm, absolutely. Isn't it? It's covered in it. Yeah. Okay. And the, the bottle on the right is very, very clearer. Absolutely. Cle it's clearer. Which, and this demonstrates that it's the substance, the electrolyte, the sodium, the chloride, the sea salt, that is being electrolyzed. Absolutely. Here. So Newton and Einstein here uh, are saying that because when they put the vial in at the beginning and there's clearly a lot of salt in that water and they put it in at the end and there's not a lot of salt in the water, that water isn't made of hydrogen and oxygen and everything that we see is down to the sodium chloride or potassium chloride, they said they used a mix. Clearly, as I've just explained, we would expect just that. This doesn't prove anything. We would expect the first vial to have more salt in it because as time goes on and that sodium chloride reacts with the water to make sodium hydroxide, then you would have less and less sodium in the water or sodium chloride in the water to make the salt. This is exactly what we would expect. This isn't proof of anything other than what we would expect to happen anyway. So... The problem is a lot of the moisture baiters watching this see that and say, oh, he's done a proper scientific experiment. Therefore, he's correct. 
But really, they don't understand the model they're trying to debunk. And when Pete or Peter, or they're both the same, aren't they? Um, when whichever one of them said it was a, a sodium based gas, well, you tell me which sodium based gas is a gas at room temperature. You tell me what sodium based gas is a gas at room temperature, is colourless, is odourless, has a squeaky pop. Uh, and that squeaky pop forms condensation, um, sorry, forms a water vapour which condenses into liquid water. You won't find it. Now, I can't wait for all the moisture baiters to come over and tell me, uh, oh, you just need to do real science. And they will clearly not have watched this bit like you guys are who are still watching. Um, because they don't have the intellectual capacity. I challenge any one of you to actually come back with a little bit of science and tell me why Peter and Peter are right and I'm wrong. Um, to be honest, what I think I'll get is uh, just a load of, to coin a phrase from someone else, word salad. So thank you for watching. And I'll see you Saturday, Saturday morning. Bye-bye.